sportsmanship, integrity, honesty, loyalty. These aren't things you see in football that often anymore, but, but it never used to be that way. Now today, I'm going to take a look at a player from my own club, Southampton. This man is a one-club man. Matthew Letizia, one of the greatest Premier League players of all time. Now, there is an announcement as well about a Premier League Hall of Fame, and it would be an absolute travesty if he is not in that first year's announcement. Now, if you do enjoy it, guys, hit the like button and the subscribe button. Hopefully, you'll learn more about my club as well. Enjoy. Matthew Letizia, Le God. There's a reason why his nickname was Le God. And I stress, legend is, is possibly even an understatement because this guy epitomizes Southampton. It really does. I was 16 years of age, flew from Guernsey to Southampton. I had no idea where I was gonna be sleeping that night. I was very nervous as a 16 year old, leaving home, didn't really have a clue about the wider world. I was very naive, but I just knew I wanted to be a professional footballer. And if I was gonna do that, this is what I had to do. That journey I took was an incredible one in the end, and I've got no regrets. He came over from, from Guernsey, and uh, he was on trial, and uh, we saw this tall, thin, gangly boy played on the right wing. But as time went on, we realised that, well, I realised that the boy had a lot of talent. Matty signed, and he would come on the school holidays like the others. Now, when he got to 16, I'd left then, but he was naturally signed, uh, given an apprenticeship. The first year of that contract was £26 a week, uh, and the second year was £35 a week, I think it went up to. I love hearing stories from history about how much people made or how much people bought houses for. Um, it's always interesting. Now, granted, it's completely relative because of inflation, but just imagine if things were the same price as they were back then, but obviously at the same relative cost now. We were on a, a win bonus for the youth team. I think we were on four pound a win and <laughs> two pound for a draw. So uh, yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a great deal of money, but that never even crossed my mind. Matthew Letizia. Matt 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 Letizia. So this is the thing you've got to realise as well as as a Southampton supporter. Every Saint supporter knows who Matthew Letizia is. Matt Letizia is synonymous with Southampton. And even now, he, he doesn't play anymore, he's retired obviously, but even now, I think children brought up as a Southampton fan know about Matt Letiz. Now, that's when they probably haven't necessarily seen him play. You know, they may not have seen clips of, of previous, but the word is spread from mums and dads um, down to their children. So, just sticking my hand up in the air. I think that game was a huge turning point in my career. Obviously, the fact Bang. that it was live on Sky uh, made a huge difference because it meant Just that the whole country kind of saw what I could do. A normal, a normal football player doesn't have that um, calmness to bring the ball down on their knee and just volley it, dink it into the into the into the corner. This guy had class and ability, but he always looked so relaxed doing it. Hey. Insane. 
He's got so many goals like this as well. Is it different scoring a spectacular goal to a normal goal? Does it feel better? Yeah. And the funny thing is, this isn't a player that scored amazing wonder goals just, just as one-offs. This man, this man, look, look, you can just look back at history and, and there will be compilation videos of Matt Letiz's goals. There are so many wonder goals that a normal player just wouldn't do. Even the top players wouldn't score the goals he could score. You know, the Agueros and players like that, they don't score goals like this. Well, that was a bit snowy. Just take it round the old team map. What I find interesting is, I I never think he really looks like what a footballer should look like. Like I said, he's quite tall and he's he's not really. I don't know. He just doesn't look like a footballer. But oh, that oh boy, that does not matter for him. Makes it look easy. But how is a player that has the kind of stature of Matt Letiz just weaving in and out? That's maybe a sort of what a small player would be able to do. Look at this. It's sort of dinked and power. That's what was amazing. It's it's a mix of two different types of shots. Just oh man, just takes the mick out of defenders. Leave, like, oh. What I think was great about him as well is, is I, I don't think he had terrific pace, but the vision on the man, the vision, this, there for example, he had the vision to see that that goalie was coming out and he, he didn't need loads of touches. It, I think that was about two touches to take it past a player and then, and then lob the goalkeeper. The vision he had, and you see that from a lot of his goals. The one earlier on, where where I said it was it was almost a dink, but also a, a powerful shot as well. He knew where the goalkeeper was. And like once again, even the top players nowadays can't do that. He knows where the cop keeper is. He knows where to put the ball. And that sort of swings out and back in. Leaves players on their backside. Good job he did have those long legs, eh? Wow. 
once again. He wasn't even facing the goal. He wasn't even facing the goal. I think I said this in one of... I think I said this in an AFL video about Buddy Franklin, who was able to shoot when he wasn't facing the goal. Here's, a, here's another example. But in this case, there's a goalie in the way and the goal's smaller. It, it's just amazing. He just, he knew where to place the ball. First midfielder to score 100 goals in the Premier League. Bang. Oh, oh. I hope they show that one again. That was just a masterpiece. Watch this. Literally, no touch to control. He knew when to dink the goalkeeper. He knew when to finesse. He knew when to power. He's such a fantastic footballing mind when he's on the pitch. Oh, you can't get that any closer to the corner first touch though that's look first touch that's not an easy thing to do from that angle as well that is incredible he is the reason why Saints were in the Premier League for so long but dink unlucky oh sold him twice like the composure the composure to do this done him oh do him again left foot even the top players today can't do that and I keep stressing this I always feel though Matt Latiz was never given the recognition in the UK or in England as much as he should have because this guy could do it against the smaller teams and the bigger teams, like it showed you against Liverpool. Make first touch volley. He was just a master of volleys. Save that one, keeper. Watch the reactions. The reactions for this. Bang, bang. Done. Job done, Matt. That is. comes out to him and he knows how to strike the ball that one it was the inside of his foot bottom corner it's... he's so underappreciated as a player Yeah, that was against Man United. D 
think. Just Peter Schmeichel, sit down, my friend. Sit down. I always love that um, sort of celebration when a player scores and they just stand there with their arms out because they know they are loved and they are respected and it was an amazing goal. I just... I. <laughs> It's a sort of oh man, I just I just really like that sort of celebration from a player that is at that level. Yeah, this is another issue. Matt Letiz played eight games for England. It's crazy because he was such a good player such an amazing player and he got eight caps that's nothing absolutely nothing and it's crazy it's crazy but I think it's because he played for a team like Southampton I reckon if he moved to a bigger club Man United Chelsea whatever actually Chelsea weren't that big at the time but you know what I mean um, then he probably would have got more caps because it's that sort of little club syndrome this is the way it is in my life. Uh, one was to be a professional footballer and the other one was to play for England. I felt like uh, I'd played well enough during periods of my career to be given a few more chat for an England B game where I scored the hat-trick um, and then didn't get in the 30-man squad after that, which was picked for the 98 World Cup. Imagine that. Now, granted, I don't think we even... Do we even have a England B squad anymore? I don't know. Um, but imagine that. You, you score a hat-trick... And you don't even get in the 30 man squad. It's insulting. It's insulting. And I would be a, I would have I wouldn't have been surprised if, if Matt Letiz was pissed off. He'll have plenty of time to practice his golf this summer, but that's little consolation to a player who'd rather be teeing up the Hello, text. Didn't that upset you a little bit? Um it upset me when I when I found out that he had rung other people and told them that they weren't in but that's the way he chooses to do it, isn't it? Just look at that stat. Now, he missed one penalty in his career. 57 scored out of 58. Um, that, is an, that is a phenomenal record. Harry Kane, what's his record? I, I might have to check afterwards. People like Harry Kane, Wayne Rooney, they're nowhere near this record. Nowhere near this record. The uh, the other great penalty taker we had was Ricky Lambert, but he didn't take this many penalties. I don't think he missed at all. 57 penalties. Remember, it's not quite as easy as you think. With a goalkeeper in, that is still some achievement. Like a huge achievement. Not a small achievement. I knew that he was an outstanding performer in, in the top league. Prior to that, he had put a few free kicks in the top corner and a few volleys past me. Something just told me that the penalty was going to go that side that night. Just a split second decision as he's, as he's running up to the ball, I'm going that way. So a little faint to the left, change direction as he's almost at the ball, make the save. Nigel Clough had actually followed the ball in, put his foot out to try and put Matt off and he did and Matt blasted it over the bar. I can tell you nowadays that would be retaken. Because the goalie has come right off his line. To be part of the legacy of such a great player, to be the only one that ever denied him from 12 yards is up there. That is his claim to fame. And this is another thing. He was a great free kick taker. Great set piece, penalties and free kicks. Let's check some out. Round the wall, corner, fantastic. As we're on free kicks and talking about a Saints player that hasn't um, got in an England squad, Matt Letiz seems pretty similar in the set piece side of things to 
James Ward-Prowse, who is is current Southampton player and has been for a long time through the academy. The Euro squad's just been announced, and James Ward-Prowse isn't in it. It's crazy. It's absolutely madness. But once again, it it feels because of the short, uh, the small club syndrome, because because James Ward-Prowse, same as Matt Latiers, because he doesn't play for one of those big big top top kind of six teams, he's been excluded. You know, you would be taking these sort of players just for the penalties, just for the free kicks, if anything. It's madness. And uh, this is the problem with being a Southampton fan sometimes. You know, you, you end up having to sell all your best players because players get greedy. Um, and you, you languish in mid-table, you know, bottom half of the table. And this was the same situation as Matt Letiz. But Matt Letiz stayed a Saints player. He he was loyal. Hopefully it's going to be the same with James Ward-Prowse. He's been with us a long time. But the trouble of being a Saints fan. Sublime. The keeper didn't even move. Bang. That wasn't even with power, that was just lofted in. Oh. Insane. The, the technique here is ridiculous. The technique is ridiculous. Incredible player. Can I just point out Southampton won, Villa won, 92nd minute. Free kick, game over. <laughs> GG, Villa. Wasn't, it wasn't just lofted free kicks, it, it had power as well. <laughs> Pick that out. Sublime. Absolutely sublime. Yeah, so here's an interesting fact that I need to move my light for. In Catalonia, in Catalonia, there used to be half-hour program every Monday when they show the best goals from the Premier League every week. Oh, hang on. Matt Letizio would be on the show. I'm talking outrageous, sickening goals. Straight in the top corner, left foot flick from the right over a defender and score against Newcastle. We would say this guy, Letizia, is outrageous and he, use, <laughs> and he never goes to a big team. He stays at Southampton. It's incredible. He could play for anyone. Our whole house was obsessed with him. That's Xavi that's saying that. You, Xavi, one of the greatest, greatest midfielders in the world. Xavi is saying this. If a player like that says something about Letiz, it means something. Um, it's all well and good me saying some, something like this, but I've got no real, you know, I've got no real um, effect on, on what's said. This is a man, they, they even they know, he stayed at Southampton when he could have been playing for anyone, the, any of the bigger clubs. You've got to respect that. And th yeah, so this was an amazing moment that the last day that Saints played at the Dell, which was our old ground, weird place, um, 
but at least it had more atmosphere than St Mary's. But he scored on the last day. How fitting, how fitting is that, that he scored on the last day at the Dell? That probably helps him become a legend. All at the time, 88th minute, lovely moment to be able to say that for the, for the rest of time that I was the last person to score the last ever league goal at the Dell meant a great deal to me. Although it was nearly ruined um, about a minute later, Chris Marsden hit his shot from the edge of the box which I thought was going in, and uh, Arsenal's keeper, Alex Manning, had tipped it over the crossbar. And, and I can remember running into the penalty box, and I thought, I want to go and say thanks to him. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I nearly went and cuddled him, and I thought, that was <laughs> break, I didn't bother. And then I went and took the corner, and, uh, and the final whistle blew, just as I took the corner. I took a short one, so nobody could score from it. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been retired nearly 20 years. Um. Yeah, that's great. Is in his testimonial. In his testimonial, he played against an England eleven, and he played forty-five minutes for both teams. That's fitting, and it, and it shows how respected he was. It really does show how how respected he was as a player. Just underappreciated at the time by England managers, I suppose. There were a mixture of emotions, really. Um, one was obviously a huge disappointment that I wasn't going to step out on the pitch again to a, a full stadium and, uh, and be able to smack one in the top corner from 25 yards and see everyone erupt. Um, there was also a little bit of relief in there, uh, I, I won't lie. Um, I was relieved that I never had to do another pre-season. Have, that was one. <laughs> so, no, I only played. I only played amateur uh, amateur football. But pre seasons are the worst. All the fitness stuff you have to do pre season, even at amateur level, it's like the worst. One of the first things that went through my mind, and you know, th- there was a, a bit of pride in there as well. That you know, I'd spent my entire career at, at Southampton in the top flight, uh, never been relegated, and you know, I'd, I'd set out to be a professional footballer to play for England. I did all those things, and along the way, um, I'd like to think I put a, a smile on quite a few people's faces. He certainly did that. There you go. Matt Letizier, I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you did, like and subscribe. And I hope I hope people got to the end of this video as well. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I'll catch you next time.